So now we are going to say going to see the following results. So what is the results? It says that so if we have a group suppose we have a group and G and we have two subgroup one is H and another is K. So H is a subgroup of G and K is another subgroup of G because uh, subgroup of subsets basically so we can talk about the intersection of do these two subsets so we get another subset h intersection k now the question is thus h intersection k is another subgroup of g so the trial says that yes h intersection k is a subgroup of g of, so if h and k as a subgroup two subgroup of g then h intersection k it will be a subgroup of g so we have the proof for these results so we just prove these results so to use the proof of the results so we just want to remind you when we will say a subset is a subgroup uh, of a group so h is a subgroup subgroup so just let me subgroup of g if and only if so implied and implied by is satisfied three condition it contain the identity elements of g and which becomes the identity elements of h also next if i take any two elements a b from h and this is true for all a b and this implies a compose b belongs to H and third condition is A belongs to H for all A belongs to H their inverse elements also belongs to L H so if these three conditions satisfied then we will say that H is a subgroup so what we are going to do we will check that the elements of H intersection K satisfy these properties or not so just let me cite it out over here so do one by one so first one so because since age and since age and k are subgroups so are subgroups i just don't want to write the subgroups of g uh, to take your time so they are subgroups so it's contained the identity element so if g belongs to age and also ag belongs to k so this implies clearly because eg belongs to both h and k so eg obviously belongs to h intersection k so first property is satisfied this go with second property so second property is so we let if what we have if a b belongs to h we have to show that a compose b also belongs to uh, sorry uh, so if a b belongs to h intersection k so that means we instead of if we write let let a comma b belongs to h intersection k we want to sh we have to show we have to show that their compositions also belongs to h intersection k now it's from the set that a comma b belongs to h intersection k implies that a belongs to both h a belongs to h and a b and so this means just like a b belongs to h and also a b belongs to k because both a b belongs to h and k so a comma b belongs to h and a comma b also belongs to k now again since so now h since h is a subgroup so h s k are subgroup so details uh, way of proof you will find in your notes so h and k are the subgroups of g so because they are subgroups of g and a b a comma b belongs to a so this obviously imply that their composition a compose b obviously belongs to h since a comma b belongs to k and k is a subgroup so a compose b obviously belongs to k so a compose b belongs to both h and k 
So from these two, we can write that A compose B belongs to H intersection K. So the first two property of the necessary and sufficient condition are satisfied. Next check for the third condition. So, so what we have the third condition? Here we have the third conditions. So if one element belongs to their set, their inverse must belong to the same set. So let me erase the first two conditions. So remember that the first condition, two conditions are satisfied uh, for the set A H intersection K. So I just erase the upper portions of the proof. So here we go, just let me erase this first. So just I erase the whole verse. So what we get from there? So we have to check the third property. So third property is so let A belongs to H intersection K. So because A belongs to H intersection K, so this implies obviously A belongs to H and a belongs to K. Now since H is a subgroup, so since H is a subgroup, H is a subgroup and A belongs to H, since H is a subgroup and A belongs to H, so what we know then clearly from the sufficient and necessary conditions A inverse obviously belongs to H and also also similar way we can say since K is a subgroup since K is a subgroup subgroup and and A belongs to K so this implies obviously from the necessary and sufficient condition that A inverse obviously belongs to K. Now A inverse belongs to both H and both uh, H and K. So we can say that obviously from these two we can imply that A inverse belongs to both H intersection K. So for the elements of H intersection K satisfied all three condition of necessary and sufficient. So H intersection K. So let me write that down. So H intersection K is a subgroup of the group G. So that's the thing. So H intersection K. So H intersection K is a subgroup. So if we have two subgroup, then their intersection is obviously subgroup, is a subgroup of G. So from there, it's a natural uh, way to ask, we can, uh, you can ask the questions. So if intersection of two subgroups is a subgroup, thus, if I take the union, thus it will be a subgroup. Oh, that's the something will be wrong if I assert that it will be similar way we can prove that their union will be subgroup. Actually their union is not always a subgroup. So H in the union K is not always a subgroup. So let me give you an example where it is not a subgroup. So just let me erase the proof uh, this portion and it's or not always true uh, that H union K is a subgroup. So it may be a subgroup and may not be a subgroup. It depends on the subgroup H and K and also over on the group. So here we go. So, so H union K, so we have, so H and K, H and K are subgroups. But we are going to construct an example, but H union K is not a subgroup. Okay, so here we consider the group G is the set of integers. So G group G is Z and we are taking Z plus the group. Here we have the group. G is Z plus. 
So we consider two subgroup. One A is H. H is the collection of all even numbers. So let me write down first. So we will see that. So H is 2Z. And you can check that 2Z plus is a subgroup. Is a subgroup of Z plus just let me uh, check that out so what zero content belongs to 2z because zero is an even number because we can write zero equals to 2 into zero so zero is an even number so zero belongs to 2z so what is 2z is a collection of all even numbers so it's something dot 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 minus 4 minus 2 0 2 4 so on so this is a 2z so zero belongs to 2z second one is we know that the addition of two even numbers is even numbers so addition of two even numbers two even numbers numbers is an even numbers is an even number so addition of two even number is an even number so if we have two elements a b belongs to 2z so a and b are even numbers so what we can write a equals to 2 into sum m1 and b equals to 2 into sum m2 if i add this to a plus b what we get 2 m1 plus 2 m2 so we get 2 into m1 plus m2 which is obviously m1 and m2 is an and uh, uh, integers so 2 into m1 into is an even numbers so we have an elements of 2z so second condition also satisfy and third condition is obviously obvious condition so third condition let me write down the third conditions which is if we know ha we, we have an even numbers and negative of even numbers is also an even number so third condition is very clear so third condition is if a belongs to 2z which means a equals to 2m1 which is an even number if i take minus a which means minus 2m1 so we can write 2 into minus m1 so which is again a uh, even number because minus m1 is an integer so this belongs to 2z so all th of the three conditions of necessary sufficient condition for the set to be a subgroup are satisfied so 2z is a subgroup of z so here h uh, is 2z is a subgroup so let me erase that but similarly you can see that here we have another example of k so here we k is 3z so 3z also a subgroup basically you can see that actually is a subgroup it has we have seen it for 2z similarly it can be seen for any m into z for any integer m so here m is k so 3z is a subgroup of z plus so 2z is a subgroup of z plus 3z is a subgroup of z plus if i take the union h union k will see that is not a subgroup so you can see why because it's it's content the zero elements it's okay but if i take on this two work I with the condition two so what we know two belongs to h because two is an even number so two belongs to h union k is very easy to see three belongs to h you can easily see because 3 is a multiply of 3 so 3z is basically what we have uh, go, uh, in this way minus 6 minus 3 0 3 6 and so on so 3 on the set so not sorry i have sorry i am sorry for that this is not in h but 3 is in k and 3 belongs to h union k so we have two elements a is so here a is 2 and b is 3 now if i take the additions so it's 
we have 2 plus 3 so we get 5 so you can see that 5 neither in 2h as 2 jets and neither in 3 jets I'm sorry uh, I am just uh, making mistakes uh, number of times for some distraction uh, from background so we have uh, 2 is an element of 2 jets, 3 is an element of 3 jets. So basically 2 is an element of H union K and 3 is also an element of H union K. But if I take the addition of this 2, so we get 5 which is neither belongs to H nor belongs to K. So it does not belong to H union K. So from that we can say that H union K is not a subgroup, is not a subgroup. So I just want you to ask the questions. I want you to find the conditions under which you can say that if we have two subgroup H and K, then their union also be a subgroup. So find an example or just find the conditions where their union will be a subgroup. So thank you for watching.